it will be recorded okay so uh, welcome welcome to our watchers to our viewers in any part of the globe probably fans of the of konkani music uh konkani is this la language of this tiny region called goa which produces a very kind of charming form of music you don't have to take my word for it take the word of sigrid pfeffer so sigrid is with us today live in frankfurt and uh, a warm welcome to her to 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 hear to her on the stage and uh, sigrid Sigr Sigr i'll let i'll let you introduce yourself but just a word from me first i was fascinated by your story of how you fell in love with konkani music tell us a word about yourself and that yeah okay it's a long story and first of all hello to goa hello to india and especially goa is has become my second home i know wonderful people there so um i can't wait to come back in winter time so yeah how did it start konkani i fell in love with that music um i never forget that moment it was in 2001 uh we had a round trip rajasthan uh taj mahal and then afterwards we had one week of holiday and it was off season and at the hotel uh we listened to the radio program and because there were not much tourists there and so they played all india radio and then i heard the music what is this this is india but it's not european because i heard the language was different uh and then i tried to and i immediately fell in love with that music and i asked the hotel staff uh what kind of music it is and it it was a long long journey to get access to informations and to the music and so um it ended up in a radio feature in an album the konkani songs uh music from goa uh but, made but, in but, but secret secret you are jumping ahead of your story a bit i like the way ah. you first told it to me so so you all were in this hotel in goa during the off season exactly yeah and, and, and i was and and you told you you asked the waiter what music is this yes so the exactly. waiter waiter was quite dismissive he said no that's that don't bother about it that's our music kind of thing it's just what we play when there are no tourists here yeah and you and, found it uh, charming you found it charming yeah and i i asked them what is it and um, then they told me yes it's the konkani program at all india radio and then i tried to get the old recordings of this music and i came back and back again but it was so difficult because i didn't know people there whom i could ask and at that time i was a little bit shy and i didn't dare to ask or i didn't dare to ask at all in your radio and i came back and sometimes i never forget that many many years ago uh, there was a bar <laughs> they had uh, a liquor bar and it was during the day Which it was bar? very dark it, it was a tangem um okay. i don't know it it was in panjim downtown somewhere in the old quarter and um i went in and because they played the, the the program there and then they also told me a little bit about that but mostly the people were very surprised uh why does she like this kind of music and so it took me years um to to get access and it's also a long story and um um it was in berlin there was a big festival at the um uh i can't remember uh it was something about adivasi how's, how's the culture of the world sorry tadivi how's how's the culture of the world how's the world cultures uh no that was much later um it was in a in an institution a heinrich böll stiftung and there i met katharina pogentorf kk and unfortunately i'm very very sad about the passing of uh sudir sudir kk kk and um and he was the person who brought me in touch with uh 
uh, Raja Narayan, a journalist who worked for the Gone Observer. He put me in touch with Shakunta Labane and she brought me to All India Radio, where I also met Tina Koshta. And um, so they played the music and Shakunta La, she played the music for me and she was trying what kind of music does, does she mean? And then finally, I never forget the moment when she put the tone arm on the record, it was an LP with music from Lorna and Chris Perry. And then I almost started crying because yes, it was that music I was longing for to find. Um, and then, then, yeah. So, so, so to interrupt you, so to interrupt you, sorry, uh, your, your theory is that Konkani music, if I get you right, Konkani music is a small kind of cultural music, which uh, is not widely known across the world, but very interesting in way and people can appreciate it, whether they understand it or not, probably like Cuban or Balkan music, which, which, which is also similarly uh, popular. Uh, I mean, it's much more popular, but but it's niche music. Is that right? Yeah, it's niche music, but it's on one side, it's strange, but on the other side, um, it's so, um, it's somehow familiar because this music is uh, filled with so many influences uh, from music from all over the world. And year by year, I came to know why it, it, it sounded like that. And it was so fascinating because in the beginning, I just wanted to get the records because I did some DJing at that time. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, it would have been nice to have to, to have these records. But then um, I, I dived deeper and deeper uh, into the history and the, uh, the, the, the political and historical context. So I couldn't stop doing research. And um, so it, it was, I was keen to know more about that and to do something about that. And um, then I got unpaid holidays, seven weeks, and then I came to India and I had uh, the great honor to do a radio feature in 2008 um, about Konkani music. I did some interviews. And um, then in 2009, there was this album. If you wait, wait a second. I have yeah. it just right here in the room I'm and sure. I can show it. One second. Sure. sure. So, so to take advantage of uh, Sigrid's absence, I feel so uh, terrible because I didn't introduce her properly enough. So Sigrid is this uh, sound recordist who has been working at a regional uh, German radio, radio station. She'll tell you more about it. And uh, it's not just like, you know, a, a German tourist falling in love with Konkani music. She knows what she's talking about because, right, Sigrid, Sigrid uh, you know what you're talking about because uh, I was just saying that your background is in is in sound and in music and all that. Yes. So after you, after you show us what you have to, tell us a little bit about your work so that people know your credentials as well. Um, initially, I was teacher for mathematics and French, but at that time there was no employment for teachers. So I had, and I was, I always wished to be sound technician. So I did the education for being sound technician. And I've been working 35 years for Hessischer Rundfunk, the public radio station in Frankfurt as a sound technician. But beside that, I always did something different. Um, I did the editing for a special music program. And um, and then in 2008, I could do this radio feature. And um, so this is the result of my, oops, of my research. And um, it's, it's a lovely CD. It, put to, it puts together all the music of Chris Perry and Lorna. Yes. And, and uh, we, <coughs> sorry, Sigrid is a bit. Sigrid is a bit uh, reticent to say this, so let me explain. She went all the way to Calcutta to HMV and all the recording companies, some of which had merged and and uh, broken up and all these kind of things. And she got permission to to uh, to come out with an edition of Konkani music for sale only in Europe, right? Yes, it's with a German label in Munich called Tricont, and they love the music immediately. 
and they said let's do it but then there were the, the times were different um now in our days it's almost impossible to to do things like that and i wish i could have this also in vinyl that would have been so nice and this cover is taken from an lp from alfred and rita rose because i met rita rose and i asked her for permission to get pictures to take pictures of this wonderful lp and so it landed up in in this cd and this uh i've got this one is from a brochure that narish fernandez allowed me to take a picture of so um and he was a very important person in this uh regarding this research because i read an article uh morning you play differently evening you play differently it was uh one chapter of the book uh which he brought out the, i think jerry pinto bombay meridian and this was i never forget i had late night shift a late evening shift at the news section at the radio station and i came across by accident uh across this article and then i knew yes this is something i have i have to follow and he was very helpful in uh putting me in touch with people and so since then i've been i've been doing that and it was yeah um i'm very happy still very happy having done this because this is uh one still wonderful music yeah. and i've I bought records on Chorbaza or somewhere else in second hand stores. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that at that at that point I would like to mention a young person he's from Goa and he is between uh commuting between Goa and Bangalore his name is Leshan Freitas I hope I don't know if my pronunciation is correct and he is also collecting these records and right. he does presentations and it's very nice to see that leshan freitas i know i know your, your pronunciation yes. is right his name is rare l e l e a x e n if i'm not mistaken yes. so yeah 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 i met i met him last time yeah. i've been in go yeah he's he's doing amazing work he is another yes. guy doing interesting work no but yeah. but but you know uh, the point i wanted to make cigarette is that uh, as the external ambassador for konkani music in europe if you, if if i may be permitted to call you that uh, yeah why not <laughs> you've done a great job in terms of popularizing this little notice music some things which something which we take for granted very often you know i think konkani music doesn't get its own uh, its own due in goa itself and uh, many of us who are english speaking by background and and have it and migration and all that look down on konkani music and we say oh it's all copycat music it's not original but i'll tell you that's not true because while goan english music is based a lot on covers the konkani music is almost 90% original in that sense the music yeah. is original the lyrics are original they may get their inspiration from you know all over the world but they are not copying tunes they are they are like you know just inspirations that are traveling and and it's fascinating in that sense so So I think you've done a great job. I saw your latest program, and I was shocked by your compilation of its music from India. And uh, Cigarette could not resist pushing in three or four uh, pieces by musicians from Goa. Tell us about that. Um, I didn't get the last. Uh, yeah, you yeah. mean the 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 event uh, in Berlin in 2015? Yeah. No, and no, then... no, no. The one the one which we were discussing yesterday on online. You know, just. this month's program where you you were the special guest yeah and and you you chose a playlist which had all this music from india which was very unusual yeah but i i just wanted yeah just to insert one event it was in 2015 the house of cultures in berlin reached out to me uh they had a big festival called mother india and they asked me to bring musicians from goa to play konkani music and that was I was always dreaming of of that and then they all came um Carlos Who? Montero Schubert oh. Cotta Maxi Cotta Sonia Cotta uh, Glenn Jack Shelton Afonso I hope 
there is no one missing. And um, Saskia Leroux from Holland on sax on, on trumpet. And that was an amazing event uh, to bring that to, to Europe. And um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. And last Saturday, it was the second edition of a monthly radio show hosted by a very good friend of mine. Her name is Angelika. And she was one of the very first female DJs in the 80s. And we are very close friends. And she invited me already last year for a radio show, uh, the Indian editions of uh, Indian edition of the Venus Lounge. And last Saturday, she invited me again. And it was so interesting to see uh, the people. They were two friends. They were also sitting during the show in the in the studio booth, and they said, "What is this? This is music from India. I never, never would have estimated." this music coming from India. And this is my, um, since some years, something which is very important for me to, yeah, to, to, to promote music from India. I like classical Indian music and I really love Indian, typical Indian music traditions, but there is so much more and this has to be promoted because Many people here, they have these cliches or there has to be a sita or a tabla and all that, but there is much more. And um, it's, I think I, I, I would like to promote music from India, musicians from India, what not necessarily must mean Indian music. There is amazing jazz, jazz avant-garde, kumbia from Goa, fado from Goa, there's electronic music from Delhi, dub, dub, dub from Delhi. <laughs> so, um, and it's so diverse and so exciting. And I think that has to be shown. Your playlist, uh, which is on ra uh, radio x.de. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Venus Lounge. Venus Lounge. Venus Tell Lounge, us about yeah. that. Yeah. Which, which was, which I listened to for almost two hours yesterday. And I loved every oh. moment of it. Oh, great to hear that. Uh, that's what very important for me uh, to to have the feedback from people uh, from from people from India because um, yeah, to get the response from people from India that's very important for me. And um, yeah, I came across that since many years. Um, I'm digging. I'm digging and I meet people, then they recommend, oh, you should listen to this and that. And then I read some online platforms. I read Rolling Stone India and I follow recommendations of people I know. And the, I come to India every year and in order to meet musicians. And um, then I get, then I reach out to musicians. I'm interested in to meet, to do interviews. And um, just recently, I, by accident, I came across a musician. I was blown away by this music. And I'm so happy having had the opportunity to, yeah, to promote that, to present that. Yeah, but, but the Konkani music, which is here, was new to me itself. I, oh. I, I, I'm, I'm going back. I'm, I'm going, I'm getting outdated. So, like for example, uh, in this one second, we'll just maybe maybe we should try and share the screen. Oops, sorry, I present extra slides, video files, share screen. Just a sec. Give me a second. Yeah, I just drink some water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, on this Venus launch, you have this band called the Panthers, which is from from Karachi of the nineteen sixties. Yes. And and I was not surprised, or was I, to find a Goan uh, among the rockers there. Me but neither. That, <laughs> Me yeah. neither. I wasn't surprised. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then of course there was Bonnie Remedius and his quartet, 
singing the Britannia Calypso, which is which is a which is an advertorial, which is an advertorial of sorts from those times, which is just an a, 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 a praise for Britannia biscuits. Very interestingly it's, done. Yeah, very, very interesting, interesting in many aspects. Yeah, that's true. And yeah. I love the music, and it's so it's so funny, and it's it's wonderful. And yeah. if you listen to it, and if you don't listen carefully to the to the lyrics, you would not never estimate an advertisement. And and by the way, there was this group, uh, a, a North Indian group, I think, singing at a, at a Goan hotel recently. And what they did was that they just took the ads from Indian TV, which was a monopoly TV in the 80s and 90s, and put all the advertisements together and made a song out of it. And the tourist found it so funny and so hilarious, Indian tourist, that they were laughing oh. their head off because they could recall what these guys were singing. And it, the, the the song went viral. I should send you a copy of that. You'll find it interesting. Uh, oh, but yes, to come back, is it yeah. is it Voktronica or is how uh, what's the name of this this uh, group? I don't know. It's a small group. I, I think they they're not even identified. You know, it was just shot by some of the Indian tourists present there at the at the. Ah, hotel. okay. I I'll send it to you. But uh, but on your list there is Joanne Fernandez singing Zygo. Yes where Joanne is playing the role of a fish vendor from Benauli. And this is the first time I've heard the song. I, 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 was, I was pleasantly surprised. I liked it very much. Yeah, isn't it wonderful? And it yeah. was a recommendation. It's, I know it's, uh, it was a recommendation of Gauri Jaya Kumar. She's a musician. Uh, she was in Pune, then she, was in, then she commuted be, between Pune and Mumbai. And she has different names, Cosmic Cow, Palpi Shilpi and um, I met her last time and then she she sent me the link uh, to this song and I immediately fell in love with that music and Gauri also shared the contact of Joanne with me and I could meet her before just shortly before I left with the night train to Bangalore I could speak to her for one or two hours and um, I said, uh, I love your song so much, and um, I'm very happy that <laughs> uh, it came to some more ears. And then, of course, you have old timers like Alfred, late Alfred, and Rita Rose. Yeah, yeah. Johnny, yeah, yeah, Johnny, yeah. Yes. A very popular song because of radio in Goa. And of course, new, new, new players who are very talented, like Vince Costa, think now. Yeah. Uh, like Vince is in the process of getting noticed, but again, I don't think we do enough to promote our musicians here. And I, I, I met him. I also met him last time. Nice and um, yeah, interesting guy, good filmmaker also. Uh, but but uh, in between, you have something like gay evening in gay Maharashtra. Yeah, it go dates back to the time when the when gay meant a totally different thing, and it yes. was sung by Meena Kava and uh, Purveen Vacham. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I remember this that song from my childhood. But it's a fascinating collection of sounds from India, and I think uh, it must be like a bit of a culture shock for for many uh, Germans who, who who think of India in a in a certain sense. And yes. I mean, yes. 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 Let's say with all of us. All of us, and when we think of Germany, we have one kind of stereotype, no, in that sense. And uh, when we think of India, we have another stereotype. Yeah. But same. It's same. It's interesting and what you do. You, you, you develop an amazing understanding of uh, of not only Konkani, which is important to us, but generally by the Indian, Indian alternative-ish, youngish, uh, popular music. Okay, uh, how do you how do you see the scene now changing? The music scene in India. Is it getting more more recognition because it's easier to discuss this thing on small niches on the net or the big brands no longer decide music taste or how does it work in your view? Uh, I think um, it's much easier um, to get access to the music because, uh, yeah, internet, thanks to internet, uh, to get access to the music and um, sometimes it's a pity that I can't buy the records because sometimes I still like vinyl but there's a, 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 a guy in his name is Avik Chatterjee 
uh, and he has a label called Free School Street Records in Kolkata. And called, he called, has called, called what? Free School Street Records is yeah. his label. And on that label, he does reissues of records, of old records from, for example, The Savages, a very well-known band from the 60s in Mumbai. And um, they have amazing plans for further reissues and they do a great work. And Abik, I met him in Kolkata. He has a full-time job. And beside that, he does all this work. And I know how much, uh, how much, uh, yeah, effort it, uh, it takes to do that. And um, so he does a great, does great work. And um, so this is, it's easier to get access, but um, you have to make a choice. And there is so much, there's a lot of music on the market and um, I try to follow it. It's my, it's a kind of mission, of a mission to do that, um, to spread the word and, Fortunately, more and more people um, are curious about that. And uh, it was not the only radio show. There's also, I have also to mention another radio show on Radio X. It's called Indian Vibes, which is already there many, many years. And it's hosted by Petra Klaus. Petra Klaus hosts the annual independent Indian film festival in Frankfurt. It's called New Generations. And she also, I have to mention that um, he, uh, she, uh, she, she does a great work in promoting independent films from India. And it's always, it's uh, wonderful, this festival. So I, I really would like to mention that as well. And I also have to mention other people like, um, Florian Pittner from Hamburg, from Hamburg, he has an amazing collection of old records uh, from the 60s and 70s from India. And also Nishant Mittal, who has a record store in Delhi. And, his, uh, and he is also a, all young people who are now collecting these old records. And uh, they have a lot of awareness of this value of this music. Sigrid, one word of advice for musicians. How do they promote their music if it is niche or in a non-English language? How do they get it out? How do get, they get attention for it? What is the best way to make it heard? Uh, there is one platform called Bandcamp. How is that? Band, Sorry? Bandcamp. Bandcamp. Bandcamp, yeah. yeah. Right. And when I... Uh, I the music... I played, I buy that because I don't want to download it for free to play it. And I think people should get the money. And there's Bandcamp, okay, YouTube, but it, it uh, that, and then there is Rolling Stone India, the big music magazine. Yeah. And depending on the genre of music, there's also Wild City. Wild City, it's also a platform. And um, SoundCloud, Spotify. Um, and mostly, um, I get recommendations. I get re recommendations of musicians from India and I know musicians in Delhi, in Mumbai, uh, so yeah, many places. And I listen to their music, then they give recommendations. And of course, I do that. I've been doing that since some years. So yeah. From, from the point of view of a musician, how do you see it? Is it a good time to be a musician today or is the marketing model so broken that uh, it's not even worth it being there? Or, or do musicians have to try different ways of making their music and work viable? It's very difficult. It's very difficult. But um, I think many of the musicians, uh, they have to do a, a job, a day job, and um, or a job in between. They, they give uh, 
they give less, they, they um, educate, they are in the field of music education, um, some work also for the film industry. It's difficult. I have, I'm, I'm not sure about that, um, how or whether they can make a living of their music. And um, oh, it's a good time. I think if you are gifted with the talent, of course, you, they have to do that. That's true. But it's, no, I think even, it's difficult. Even, even, even in other creative professions, you know, uh, we saw technology as a challenge once. But I think it's a double-edged sword in the sense that it, it uh, takes away certain opportunities and it adds on certain new opportunities. So, you know, I'm very optimistic about uh, how it opens up potential. But uh, I don't know how it affects uh, different segments exactly. That that is something. But though though my re my suspicion is that it'll be it'll take a little bit of time before before musicians can realize what is the power of technology and how it can work for them rather than against them. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Well said, well said. Yeah, and Sigrid? one thing. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Carry on, carry on. Uh, one thing which is also very difficult and has been a bit frustrating for me. I've always try, been trying to uh, to get venues or gigs for musicians who are on tour in Europe anyway. There's a wonderful singer. She is in summer in, in Europe. I saw her in London. I saw her once in Berlin in a very small venue. I've been trying that very hard to get access to um to agencies or venues, it's very difficult. And um, my dream is a festival. <laughs> my big dream is a festival like the Mother India Festival in Berlin and to invite a, a, a lot of young and interesting musicians all across the genres to Germany to have a big festival, to have lectures, to have discussions about this topic because I think uh people not only in germany they uh, i i always experience when i'm in india the people they know a lot they know everything about music from all over the world but here in Ger for example in germany i speak for germany they, what this is from india no idea they have this cliche it has as i already said it has to be it has to be with sitar and tabla and somehow exotic and this is one interesting point, this exotism, which is, uh, there are also people I get, I had recently, I had a, an event, it, it was called the other, the other Sound of India. And uh, in advance, I invited some people and there were two or three people who said, no, I want, I want the real India. But what, what is the real India? So, um, they have, it has to be like that and that. And this, uh, yeah, it's it's interesting, this phenomenon of uh, expectations and uh, thinking about another country, what they don't know. So um, I'm very grateful. I'm very thankful that I, I, I've learned so much about India and, and to come there and um, to know so many people and musicians and um, yeah your your dream about a festival can actually come true and i hope it does as far as germans go while while the mass may be caught up with with mass media and the stereotypes it promotes there is always i mean you know, i was impressed by the german approach to the outside world wanting to know more you know, having space for world cultures and all these kind of things. And even small niche groups, they're always willing to experiment and try it out and listen to people who, uh, you know, who know more on that subject and all those things. So it's fascinating in a certain sense, you know, because uh, they, they have, Germany has the openness of the non-English speaking world, whereas the English speaking world already thinks it knows enough. So, so that's... Ah, okay. Uh, uh. And, uh, and... I want to next shift to asking you about Konkani and your suggestions to it. But before that, uh, we have something like uh, 64 or 65 uh, people watching us live right now, which is very nice. Uh, there are small chat boxes where you can either ask questions or comments. You can make comments or give feedback. 
which we can highlight on the screen at uh, some point. And if you if you also would like to tell us which part of Goa, India, or the world you're listening in, you're most welcome to do it. It would be very nice to know uh, where people are listening to us live. Though, of course, this will mm -hmm. be online later on as well. So it can be heard online also. But Sigrid, my question to you is this. Uh, supposing you were to make a business plan for promoting Konkani music worldwide, uh, what would it say in, in, in brief? Ah, uh, business. When I hear the word business, ah, uh, difficult. I'm, I'm the wrong. Yeah. Uh, you need passion. That's all. Passion is business. For us, passion yeah. is business. So that's fine. Yeah, but it's, 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 sometimes it's, it's challenging, uh, to only have the passion and, um, for the most of the pro programs, I don't get the money. Uh, this is, fortunately, I have, I had a secure job. Um, I'm now old enough, uh, I'm retired. So I have the time, I have more time to do that. And I, I committed my, my energy and my time to do that, to promote that. And, but, I have only very small niches where now slowly, slow. I've been doing this since uh, more than 20 years, but only now, little by little, some doors open. And I have some plans I don't want to talk about yet about. I don't want to talk about yet because it's still in the planning and the so. Um, but it's also a question of money and after the pandemic also in germany it's it's so difficult many venues they closed and when i asked i would i would have loved to do a second edition of Konkani Konkani songs but it's yeah. uh would 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 see plans like uh making Konkani music videos help the field or, or should Konkani songs be subtitled into, say, no, languages like English, German, whatever? Would that help? That would help. Uh, but it also, it has to be, um, uh, I'm a bit picky regarding my musical taste. Uh, it has to be something special, like, uh, for example, Joan Fernandez, this song, Saigu, Saigu. Uh, it was not necessary to know the lyrics. I, Joanne, she explained me a little bit. Uh, she told me a little bit about the song, but the music sp spoke for itself. So um, it's something very unique, very interesting. And also the album of uh, from Vince Costa, which is, I don't, uh, I, for, it, I think it was from 2015. This is interesting music. It has to be interesting musically. And not covers on covers again, and um, <clears throat> it has to have a fresh sound, an interesting and fresh sound. In or, for example, sorry, yeah, for example, I also like the music of Sonia, Sonia, she, she, she or said, sorry, she yeah, she she said, very, yeah, she's a very, uh, very good musician, and um, that's also very something diverse, very, also. Portuguese, yeah, yeah. Things. yeah. Who are your favorite favorite top five Konkani uh, singers or musicians? Oh, uh, of course, Lorna, uh, Lorna, Alfred Rose. Um, I have to look. Um, uh, Justin Bass, and um, uh, and then of course Joan Fernandez. I but I only know one song of her and I would like to encourage her to do more. Um, yeah, there's Annette Pinto. Yeah. And also, um, he is not, uh, he is not gone, but, um, he also does wonderful or that did wonderful Konkani music. Oslando. Oslando is yeah. gone. Oslando is a Bombay one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. I, I thought he's from Mangalore. I, I no, wasn't no, no. sure. And many oh, okay. of these things, many of these things are a matter of definition because if you go back long enough, then most Mangalorians are of Goan origin also. So, oh, okay. so like you know, at least at least uh, sound wise, like Wilfie remembers and all these guys are very much part of the Goan music uh, landscape because of All India Radio. 
playing a lot of their music and getting and they were really popular you know even in goa we'll see the members for example and and some other konkani greats from manglo are very much like no one would even think of them as not ours uh, you know one i I've, i've heard from one he's also a friend on facebook but we never met and i would love to hear him playing he is i think his name is maxi miranda he plays the ukulele that would yeah. be interesting for me something which is uh i'll give you maxi's contacts i'm i'm a friend of his brother i'll give you his contacts oh okay he's in town yeah 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 so that's that's very interesting in terms of other forms of konkani music what do you think about it because you focus on the kantara and the popular popular young music okay but yeah. there is for example the tiat music there is a mando which is more more classical in that sense in a certain sense and and there is uh, other forms of konkani uh, you know hindu konkani music uh, yeah. what do you make of what do you make of that uh i'm not very familiar with that but i like it as well rap rap so, they we have a generation a young generation of rappers which which are you know beyond my age group obviously uh but uh, they seem to be having their own fan following and uh, net has helped them to grow enormously so so that would be also that is something i would like to explore next time rap yeah. it's also an interesting phenomenon in india because many rap groups they sing in their language yeah. mostly yeah and uh, yeah that would be interesting to know more about that so do you think that uh, language is a barrier when it comes to music uh ah hockey oh thank you roy of course i know i know that uh sorry sorry rocky uh i forgot of course he was amazing yeah rocky thank is you. amazing in the present tense he's always amazing yeah. Yeah, he's because very I mean, amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean he's one guy who I know who's, who plays 28 or 29 instruments or something like that and uh, Yeah, and, and he is uh, he does he does his music with the most uh, uh you know enormous aspect of humility and he he'll just underplay it all the time and he'll churn yeah. out this fascinating pieces of work he did he did one of the mandos on his uh, with a special guitar effect that's completely amazing. I'm so proud that I convinced him to share it under the Creative Commons. It's out there on Wikipedia. Lovely piece of oh. music. Oh, well, let let me know more about that. I can't. I, I also I, I also can. Ask, oh, Rocky, shame on me. Of course, but <laughs> it's it's almost ten years ago, and I know that I knew that I might so, have forgotten so we, the name. So we we better forget. We better forget to say things here because only when we say incomplete things. that the ruhi lobos of the world will uh, stop by to say hi and remind us that we are getting our things wrong so i'm going to say some things wrong purposely so that someone corrects me but no one is telling me which part of the world they are listening in i can see that there are 75 people listening on online but, but they are not telling me so they are feeling shy probably so anyway uh, but 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 in 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 terms of uh, your experiences with goa uh, uh, cigarette uh, you found it getting you found it tough getting started initially is that right is it because yeah. goa is a closed society or 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 because we we speak to ourselves most of the time or because uh, konkani is a kind of a closed culture not so much uh, understood from the outside world i mean how do you put it how do you explain that um that's many years ago and i must say i was very shy at that time when i heard it was 2001 and then when i came back <laughs> uh now not more no more uh, anymore but um i didn't dare to ask um i tried to get in touch and then i had problems to understand the english my english has an accent of course a very german accent and then of course the indian accent at that time it was very difficult to understand and i didn't dare to ask may i see your archive what is there and may i speak with you it was more from my side that i was not now i would be more open to ask frankly um uh, i think it was i would not say it was my fault but um it was in the very beginning i never never would have estimated to do this i just wanted i just wanted to have old records 
to have that. But then, as I already said, the history, the story that was so interesting, the history and um, but it was for me, it was difficult. It was a challenge. And um, I think it was more from my side. So I can't say they were a little bit suspicious. I, I remember the first persons I've got in touch with, they were a little bit, hmm, what does she want? <laughs> they, yeah. Uh, so they were surprised that I'm interested in, in, in their music. And, and I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that they were surprised because uh, most of us in Goa take these things for granted. Okay. For us, this is local music. This is second rate music. This is not something we would boast about. Uh, things change. Things change along the way. I think the net played a bigger role in helping us understand the, the broad picture, you know. So, so in that sense, when you came on the scene, it was still just beginning to be understood. Dr. Mm -hmm. Zay Pereira and, and you know, uh, and Mikhail Martins and Father Antonio Costa, they had written the first books on the Mando and they had uh, highlighted the importance of Goa as the center of where East and West music met each other. And uh, then other books were getting written and uh, music was coming from across the world. Basilio Magno was doing his own work in Spain. He passed away recently. Uh, then, you know, people were were writing about it and Goan bands were being noticed and and we, uh, video came around and started showcasing these bands. I remember there's an excellent video done by my friend uh, Derek Almeida on the life story of uh, Rocky Lazarus. And he tells mm. it very interestingly how he got started, you know, playing with a toy uh, guitar made from a broken coconut leaf or something of that sort. Very nicely told. So, so you were among the first uh, who discovered the charm of Konkani music, at least in a German context, at least, for sure. In a German context, for sure. When you take this music back to Germany, how do people greet your thesis? Because, as you said many times, it doesn't look Indian enough. It, it doesn't even look Indian in that sense. Mm. So, and you are saying, you are trying to convince them that this is interesting. How do they, how do they respond to you? That's what um, I want to um... Before, I would like to, to add something because there's another musician I've met recently uh, because Rocky and Schubert Cotta, they told me to meet, meet him, William de Souza, a drummer, an amazing drummer. He lives in Mapsa. So just to mention that. And he played with a German band in the 80s. So, um, yeah. Um, the German band that came to, that came to, to, uh, to the beach belt and... Uh, yeah, yeah. M Embryo uh, Dissidenten, yeah, they came in the 80s so and met William and he played with them. So um, coming back to your question to, oh, now I've lost the track. How do people, how did people respond to your, your thesis that this is interesting uh, music? Yeah. I'm talking, I'm not talking about Goan expat communities. They, they, they are, they are already, already converted, but yeah. you have to <laughs> the rest of the world now. Yeah. When I, I was working on this and on the program again it was late late evening shift at the radio station in the news section uh we sat together we we always sat together um the present uh, the uh, the person who presents the the news and then the editor and we we chat and then i played the music to them not saying what it is and then i said what would you think where does this music come from no idea so i collected oh cuba uh balkan or this and that and then but the language what's what what is this language and most people say when they don't know india they say generally do you speak indian sometimes people ask me do you speak indian but then i have to ask yeah which language do you mean because there are so many languages in india and um so nobody would es estimate this music coming from India. That's interesting. And but it's a niche, as I said, all, especially this older music. Uh, regarding the music I presented recently in that radio show on Saturday, contemporary music. I think people are more open to that. But still, 
there are a lot of people who really like that album so so over the years i mean uh, there would be a greater understanding building up but it's a niche that that you know yeah i think so okay. i think so yeah and um yeah one question i would have i would um does anybody know a person a musician called david solomon and his merrymakers there's a Konkani song uh called flory and i've been asking so many people does anybody knows does does anybody know sorry for my english sometimes i make a lot of mistakes um it's yeah david solomon and his merrymakers and the name of the song is flory there's a yodeling in the beginning it's one of my very very favorite songs ever in konkani very interesting let's hope that someone answers it either online or after the show when they yeah. hear the query yeah and there's also something i have it on the 78 pm uh, 8 uh rpm record RPM. Yeah. yeah rpm record it's from uh i think lucio rodriguez and the Konkani folk song group are and then um it's a, a decni i think and this yeah. is also amazing this music it's one of my very favorite songs i see uh areta delia yeah konkani's folk, konkani folk song group and i hope that i will be able to refurbish this 78 which i found on chobaza because uh, it's one it's a uh, wonderful music in Goa, if you ask enough people, you can almost uh, catch the tail of any snake and pull out the full snake. So it's not very difficult. Ah, oh, okay. But we just need to ask. Yeah, yeah. We just need to ask. Incidentally, the word "merry makers" uh, was used in quite a few bands, like you know, in in those yeah. days. Uh, so, so like I've heard the word "merry makers" as part of a name. It may not be the same David Solomon, which you refer to. Cigarette, if you had to explain a history of goan music from your point of view what would you see as the highlights what would you stress on uh on both traditions i have uh, i know what you're familiar with yeah so um but could, could you repeat your question i'm not sure well uh, if i understood it correctly uh, your a question. history a history of goan music from your understanding uh, However, yeah. It is, yeah. Uh, Goa is the smallest. I, as I, 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 if I'm right, um, Goa is the smallest state of India, but it has a very special story. Of course, due to the long Portuguese colonial rule, which had a big impact on Goan culture, completely different to other Indian states. But it's uh, it's like a cell which had a lot of influence on other music on, for example, Bol uh, Indian film music, especially Bollywood film music and jazz, the early history of jazz in India. Wonderful book by Narish Fernandes, by the way, Taj Mahal Foxtrot. It had this tiny, tiny, <laughs> it, the history is so amazing, so interesting, and it's so diverse. Um, so I think it's worth to have a look on it, on this very, uh, very special his mu musical history and how uh, it mingled because there are some examples of a mixture of Kantaram and uh, the Hindu tradition. And for example, the Kala Academy is a wonderful example how it can work so that you can you can learn both traditions what struck me was uh, people like jose pereira Zé pereira making the point that goa was the first place in the world in the world where east and west musical traditions fused uh, mixed mingled clashed yes. what do you want to say so so you know the the outgrowth of it is something very unique 
Yeah. And then someone like Badroy Barreto, uh, who the creator of this film, Nacho Ya Kumpatsa. Yeah. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Yeah, we this... screened it. I proposed it for the Mother India Festival in Berlin in 2015. Uh, yeah, yeah. Amazing, amazing film. You, yeah. you did, you've done uh, Goan culture, great service. So he, he makes this point of how Konkani influences full Bollywood uh, music scene. So while we think of it as Bollywood music, a lot of it is actually shaped by Goan musicians and things like that. Uh, beside Naresh's book, there was also another book by Mario Caprali Sa called Wings of Fire. I have and, that. This, yeah, 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 yeah. Some interesting that, essays in that. Yeah. And, That's uh, also one of my important books and sources. I bought that in 2004, something. It was uh, very, very, uh, it played a key role for yeah. my research, this book. Yeah. 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 And I guess we are still struggling to understand so many aspects of Goan music which we don't even know, uh, the younger generation keeps uh, redefining it, which is a good thing. I'm not complaining about it. I think it's fantastic that that's happening. And new rappers are kind of uh, kind of making the scene, uh, getting noticed, getting getting attention. How do you see the future from here? What should what should Konkani be doing? Any suggestions that you could make as, a, as someone who, who is familiar with the German uh, music industry, uh, with German radio stations? at a very deep level um i must say i'm not not really fit because i i'm aware that also my musical taste is a niche um i have to to recall that because um generally people they he, it's difficult to say because um I don't have any clue about the mainstream tastes. I have no idea. I think it's it's a niche. But um, it was interesting for me to experience on Saturday also sometimes the face of Angelica, my friend Angelica, who hosts the show. Wow, what is this? This is wonderful. They really, she was, she really liked the music and um, she wants to get more. And um, I think there is, um, it can be possible to arouse more interest, but very, very little steps. And life, I have maybe, to steps maybe steps. But, but, yeah. but having said that, I think life is a lot about offering explanations and offering context to, to, to what may initially seem like strange, unusual, you know, even bizarre, bizarre aspects which we are encountering and we can't make sense of. And in this regard, I really would like to say, Sigmund, this is our third or fourth interview together over the years, yeah. maybe over 15 years. I think you've done a great job in terms Thank of you. You know, taking Konkani music and giving it a context in Europe and explaining to people that this diversity is there. Not just that, you documented things for us which, which we are not aware of, which I'm not aware of. I'll speak for myself. And uh, you've done a great job. I want to say thank you once again. Thanks for spending your time here. Any last words or something you'd like to add? Or maybe something yeah. I should have asked? Feel free to. Yeah. No and I also would like to uh, to mention Tina Costa. And she and Leshan, they did a great job, I think, at the last Ser Serendipity Arts Festival. They had this exhibition. And it's a pity that I have missed that. And so... Um, yeah, I would like to mention them and also Florian Pittner from Hamburg, who has this wonderful collection. He also has some Konkani stuff. And um, yeah, there are so many, much more people whom I would like to thank you, uh, to thank, because um, it's only due to those wonderful people who helped me, who supported me, who are open to share their music, their thoughts their story with me and um, feeling welcomed, like in Kolkata. That was a wonderful experience. Uh, yeah, that people share that with me. And um, so uh, I do my very best uh, to move on in this. When, when everyone adds a little, the field grows. And I think it's growing. Uh, in leaps and bounds because of you know people like you not only you but like you and including you inspiring so many others and the younger generation is doing it i'm sure 
they reach a they reach a they reach a big space they reach a you know kind of a space which everyone is proud of we can't forget the people who laid the foundation the kantara is 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 now uh, like you know so many years old and uh, so many decades old at least from the 50s if not more so they have laid the foundation it's our duty to pass it on to the next generation to make it better and thank you so much uh, especially especially uh, rui rui lobo a great maestro always shy of yeah. telling his own shy of telling his own story we need to drag him here one day i will do it so he he says a special thank you to you sigrid thank yeah. you so much hi rui yeah and also thank you i have shakuntala she was also one per he she played she played the, the the record for me and also tina who is also sending me information so yeah i have to thank to say thank you to all the people also in goa that is that is, that is that is shakuntala barney uh, this announcer uh, musician yes. singer, much, much more who uh, dr shakuntala barney who has done a lot of uh, mu uh, work on the music of goa in uh, eastern western formats everything yeah thanks and, and, and yeah thank you for your time i think uh, it's summer there so it will be uh, late till quite it will be bright till quite late in the evening and yeah. uh, sorry for eating for eating away into an hour of your time so grateful that you shared all your all that you know about the world of company music thank you once again yeah thank you for yeah for inviting me <laughs>